Now, heterocycles. Heterocycles are any cyclic groups that have a another atom that is not carbon, that has a hetero atom. So hetero is different. Okay. Now, heterocycles does those have to be aromatic. Normally, we speak about aromatic heterocycles, but the heterocycle on its own right does not have to be aromatic. And this is the point where things get interesting even in nature. Okay, here are a number of heterocyclic atoms. And these are useful because most of these are drugs. When you start looking at drugs, you start looking at introduction of different groups. Okay? And having it a heterocycle, having heterocycle becomes of the utmost importance. If you look at things like, it's not drawn here, like vitamin B12, it has two heterocycles, one aromatic, one non-aromatic, and these start becoming even important in penicillin, for example, where you have nitrogen heterocycles. <coughs> so it's a system where heterocycles actually become quite prevalent, quite common when you're working in industry. Okay? There are very few cases where you don't introduce groups which have nitrogen, hydrogen, uh, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur. Okay? And now, <coughs> We're going to be speaking about nitrogen, oxygen, and sulfur because these are the three that are most commonly found in nature. So, how do you prepare heterocycles? The easiest way to prepare heterocycle is through an intermolecular SN2 reaction. Of course, to prepare via intermolecular SN2 reaction, you need to try and have a good leaving group and you need to have a nucleophile. Normally, oxygen, sulfur, and nitrogen can act as nucleophiles themselves. Okay, so oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur would be pushing electrons out to outside of the group. Okay, outside of the ring. And you need to have at least n equals 1. But of course, you need to look at the ring strain. So the ring strain is normally going to be similar to that of carbon. So we know that um, cyclopropano, propan, propana, pro, cyclopropane is quite strained, whereas cyclohexane is OK. Cyclohexane would have the both inter conformation. So even at this point, you will still have the both inter conformations if you were to have Similar, something similar with the heterocycles. Okay, now to prepare oxacyclopropanes, there is a special reaction. Okay, so to prepare cyclo uh, oxacyclopropanes, there is one particular reaction where you can react the peroxide. And this is a peroxide with an alkene. And this was introduced to double bond. Okay, important in this particular reaction, you are having a you are you are going to have stereoisomerism, okay? And these two stereoisomers are going to be different. So they will not be symmetric, they will not be diastereomers. And antiomers, they will be diastereomers. Okay, now let me manage a little bit about naming because I haven't actually talked about the naming of these groups. So if you have oxygen, it's oxa, nitrogen, it's aza, and sulfur, it's dia. Okay, so this would be oxacyclopropane, propane because it has three atoms. Cyclo because it's cyclic, and oxa because it's an oxygen. Okay, so these are going to be named exactly the same as their 
carbon counterparts, okay? But you're then going to mention whether it's oxygen, sulfur, or nitrogen. So, oxa is a tire. So, oxocyclopropane, oxocyclopropane. Then, the number, the priority group, will start with the hetero atom. So, for example, here, you have three methyl, so it's one, two, three, three methyl oxocyclohexane. On the other hand, if you have something like a nitrogen, you name it like a normal amine, which has N methyl azacyclopropane. So this group here, this cyclopropane, aza because it's nitrogen, and then on the nitrogen, there's another methyl. So it's N methyl azacyclopropane. Apart from this, then you have to consider that they are exactly the same. So two fluoro cyclopropane, two fluoro, starting from one from sulfur. Then this is one, two, three, so three cyclopropyl thiocyclohexane. Of course, the acidity will be slightly different between the carbon analogs and heterocycles. For example, this dithiocyclohexane, these, these hydrogens here are going to be a little bit more acidic than normal. Why? Because sulfur is a little bit more acidic than carbon. Sulfur attracts electrons more than carbon. And therefore, it's a situation where the whole structure will be a little bit more acidic. Okay? Now, reactions. How do these groups react? First and foremost, they open up because the rings are strained. This means that any nucleophile can attack and the ring is opened up on the carbon adjacent to the heteroatom. Now, here, you have two options. You have option one, where you have two hydrogens, and option two, when you have the phenyl group. It is that the attack will always happen on the least substituted. Why on the least substituted? Because there is less steric hindrance. Of course, if you have to choose to go through a door which is three meters wide, or do a door, door which is 20 centimeters wide, which is easier. If the door is open, the door that is free. And again, note, now, you won't have stereochemistry here. Okay, we'll do a, bit, a little bit of stereochemistry with regards to these questions later on. But note that they are on opposite sides. Okay, the way they will open up the methoxy group and the hydroxyl group, they will be on opposite sides. Okay, now, increasing the ring size, such as going to cyclobutane, okay, so this is oxacyclobutane, of course, you will require a little bit of a stronger condition. Apart from this, the methoxide is a lot more nucleophilic than the methyl amine, okay? So methoxide is a lot more nucleophilic than the methyl amine. But here you will again open the ring structure to form the hydroxyl, and as you've added a primary amine, you form a secondary amine. Okay, now this reaction we have necessarily spoken about in the preparation of amines. Okay, yes, it will work, but to make the actual ring structure, it's not the easiest of reactions. So I would not really recommend that this reaction is prepared via the opening up of ring structures. Okay, there might be other routes that can be taken to prepare the compound and methyl 3 amino 1 propanol. Okay? So, again, let's look at the name. So, now that we've actually done quite a few groups, I'm actually going to emphasize the names. So, between the hydroxyl and the amine, hydroxyl group is dominant, which means that it's propanol. 
If it's propanol, then it has to be one on the hydroxyl. So the amino group is three. The amino has a methyl group attached to it. So it's N-methyl, three amino, one propanol. For rings larger than four, there is no ring strain. Now, this no ring strain is not entirely true when the ring structure becomes seven, eight, nine. But normally we stop at six. <coughs> so, you can open these up, but to open them up, you need strong reactions and strong reactants. And these would be normally including a strong acid and a good high temperature. Remember, in chemistry, it's very common that the higher the temperature, the more possible the reactions will be. Okay? Now, of course, remember, when you're going to do a reaction like this, HBr actually displaces the hydroxyl, the alcohol. So remember what you've done previously. Hydroxyl group, alcohol groups are actually substituted with HBr. Therefore, the conditions will not stop the reaction at one bromo, but it will be a dibromo. Now, in reality, what's interesting about these groups and heterocycles are the actual aromatic. Okay, so the heterocyclopentadienes. These are aromatic cycles. So if you follow Huckel's rule, the first thing that we've done, these would all be heterocycles, these would be all be aromatic, and they will all actually work. So they all have six electrons, similar to benzene. Now, of course, you might be in a position where you can compare the strengths and reactivities of these groups compared to the heterocycles, okay, compared to benzene. Now, we're gonna be doing six here. We're gonna be doing cyclopentadienyl anion, pyrrole, furan, and thiophene. Please do learn the names. Even if you are going to actually study these, and not have them for your exam because they will be an assignment. These are important to know. So you can't really continue and study chemistry or organic chemistry and not know the heterocyclic groups because these tend to appear in a number of reactions. Okay, now, out of these, the most interesting is cyclopentadienylanine. Why? Because this is a very, very, very strong base. It's a very strong base because for you to be able to have cyclopentadienylanine, you need to have lost a proton. So this is a full-blown negative charge. Then, pyrrole, furan, and thiophene, they are also a little bit more reactive than benzene. But remember, they are not as nucleophilic, okay? And note that both all of the nitrogen, oxygen, and sulfur, they are sp2 hybridized. The hybridization here, it's sp2, not sp3, so that the electrons can form a ring. You can form a cloud of electrons. Because remember, normal nitrogens, oxygen, oxygen and sulfur, they are sp3 hybridized. Sp2 is not, or normally, not normally, sp2 takes place when you have a double bond. Now, you can see that there are no, there are no double bonds on the nitrogen, oxygen, and sulfur. But in order to be aromatic, in order to have the electrons shared between all the atoms, then yes, this would have to be aromatic. Therefore, this would have to be an sp2 hybridized and the p orbitals have to overlap. Okay, let me make that clear again. For these to be aromatic, the orbitals have to overlap. The only way orbitals can overlap is to have p orbitals. Therefore, nitrogen, oxygen, and sulfur are all sp2 hybridized. 
And this is what I was just saying before. They are all, all, all P orbitals. Therefore, they are all SP2 hybridized, which means that they can interact. For oxygen and thiophene, that would mean that they have one lone pair that is perpendicular to another. One lone pair that is perpendicular to another. This reduces a little bit the aromaticity because these two lone pair will actually repel a bit, making this lone pair not 100% in line with the others, but it will still work. So for example, when you did something like these are the reaction, thiophene and furan can actually sometimes work. They will work as if they are dienes, okay? They are dienes because they have two double bonds. And here are the resonance forms of parole. So parole, you can start with the lone pair from the nitrogen going into the ring. Okay, ending up with negative charges. What I want you to do is take a few minutes to actually note how these forms arise. Okay, so take a couple of minutes to note that this is more electron rich, for example, than benzene. Why? Because the alone pairs are coming from the somewhere in the ring, they are coming from the nitrogen. If they're coming from the nitrogen, that means that they are going to be more available. Remember, carbon has no lone pairs. Carbon, if you have methyl benzene, for example, you normally have a little bit of electro, a little bit of a push of electrons through the induction effect, which is then distributed in the ring. Here we literally have the lone pair moving into the ring. Okay, so pyrrole, furan, and thiophene would be a lot a more electron rich than a normal benzene, okay? Than a normal non-aromatic, oh, non-heterocyclic aromatic ring. Okay, take a couple of minutes to take a look at this. Now, this actually means that pyrrole is slightly acidic, but we'll be seeing this later on. Now, how do you make heterocyclopentadienes? And preparations are actually everything in chemistry. Okay? Now, this reaction here is a dehydration pretty much, where you substitute these two carbonyl groups, okay, and introduce the nitrogen, oxygen, or sulfur. It's dehydration because you are removing water, okay, and you need a dicarbonyl compound. The dicarbonyl have to be gamma. So gamma meaning this carbon you don't include, then it's alpha, beta, gamma dicarbonyl compound. Okay. Remember, this is the functional group. As a functional group, you don't include it in when you say alpha, beta, and gamma. So it's alpha, beta, gamma. So it is a, di a gamma dicarbonyl compound. Okay. 
and you end up removing two oxygens and four hydrogens. Okay? Sorry, two oxygens, one oxygen and two hydrogens. The other oxygen would then replace the group here. What's expected out of you is not the mechanism here, okay? What's expected out of you is to know that as soon as you remove these two groups, you will get your heterocyclic and that you can get any heterocyclic you want simply by having a different uh, gamma dicarbonyl compound. So remember, having a different gamma dicarbonyl compound will mean that you have will mean that you have a different reactivity, okay, at the end of the day. And you also have slightly different um, you also have slightly different scenarios and a variety of aromatic rings, okay? So starting with the right structure, if you're in industry, you can easily go via one step to make the aromatic ring that you want, okay? Does anyone know how to look at chat by any chance? Um, talk. There should be a tab at the bottom. It's my chat. Can we go? Um, can I share your screen, Oak? I am not very sure to share screen, particularly. More for a tab, Tiak. Like, met you come in there, bis. Can I video, Tiak? For this Saturday. And then it should it should pop up. I should go share on the presenter screen. Give me a second. No problem. Okay. So, with regards to practicals, that's why I wanted to look at chat, not to see if you actually asked anything. With regards to practicals, I highly doubt that the practicals will be included in your assessment. Because what everyone has done them, I can't in good conscience mark you for the practicals and give them to you as part of your assessment because the practicals are normally different and easier than any assignment or exam. A practical, you should be able to get between 80 and 90, not because you're good, but rather because the practical allows you to get those marks. So you've got marks for behavior in the lab, you've got marks for work, you've got marks for results. Up to that point, normally, and I'm gonna say normally, from 30, you should get around 28 to 30. In the report itself, you have marks for method, you've got marks for a slight introduction, you've got marks for aim, so on and so forth, meaning that in a practical, not getting any, anything over 80 is because you've done something wrong. You already don't understand the practical. Again, this is not gonna be my call, okay? It will be a departmental call. Um, but I'll let you know. As soon as I have an answer, I'll let you know. I will be speaking to Tsunaga later on in the day, and I will be able to tell you what the situation is. Okay? Yes, I it doesn't seem like, I, it seems I can't look at the screen when, at the chat when I'm sharing the screen. That's the situation. So, This is the mechanism of the reaction, okay? Now, take note of this, because this is not in, in Volheim. Of course, I will be sending, I, you all have the PowerPoint, if you not, not I will be sending you the PowerPoint. But take, take good note of this, because this is not online. Okay, no, this is not in the book, or at least not in my version of the book. So, why does this happen? This reaction happens because of aromaticity. Aromaticity means that you want to form the aromatic structure, which is more stable because of the localization. The first step is 
adding a proton, okay, and the oxygen, which then allows for the compound, the reactant, the starting material to lose a proton itself, okay? And all this is here is tautomerization, okay? It's keto enol tautomerization. So you have the carbonyl, and you can form the alkene and hydroxy group. This is very common, and this is actually happens when you have a slightly acidic ketone, as is this case. Then you can protonate the second ketone, the second carbonyl group, which can then allow for intramolecular, important intramolecular cyclization, okay, to produce a non aromatic phenol. So this is an azocyclopentene. Okay, and it's a hydroxyl group on it. This can then protonate, and water is very easy to lose, and you will end up having the furan. Okay, by losing a second proton, and you end up having the furan. Now, for thiophene and for Role, it is something similar where first first you would produce the amines nitrogen and nitrogen and sulfur and sulfur and then you can do the reaction with regard to mechanism if you know the one for furan I'm very happy okay so if you know this mechanism I'm very happy and this is showing you what's happening step by step this is showing you what's happening and how you're getting an aromatic compound. So remember, the last step, this last step, you don't need anything because as soon as you lose that proton, you will end up getting an aromatic structure and therefore it will want to happen. This is similar to the electrophilic substitution in benzene, for example, where the last step losing the proton it's actually something that is very, very simple and very energy favorable. <coughs> and here you have a few reactions. This is preparing a furan with two phenyl groups and another cyclic group at the end of it. Again, so if you manage to synthesize a molecule like this, then you can easily make this furan ring that looks a little bit more, a, a lot more complicated than this one. So synthetically here, you can start with something simple. And this is simple because it's non-aromatic. It's a lot easier to get. And you get increased, compl increased complex reaction. Or look at the thiophene here. This thiophene starts from a simple, six carbon chain structure, okay? It's not the point where I'm telling you these reactions are easy. It's the point where we are making more complex material, okay? So even if you struggle a little bit to get the starting material, this is so much more complex, this is so much more expensive that these reactions are normally very economically feasible. And Last but not least, it's tough to make, it, to make the paroles. The paroles, you are substituting one of the oxygens to an amine. Then the amine itself will probably interact and form the inamine, inamine, okay? And the reaction, the same process will go similar to what we had for the carbon for the furan preparation, okay? Now, again, don't be surprised when it comes to mechanisms, that I tell you the parole mechanism is similar to that of the furan. So can you use the same theory? Can you use your knowledge to write the mechanism? And you should be able to do it. Now, I will be a little bit harder with the questions, or I have to be a bit harder with the questions for, no, for those who 
are not actually have not actually started talking from the beginning because the situation is that you will not be having an exam you will probably be having an assignment and therefore i will give you a set of questions where you have to answer these set of questions have to be a bit harder than normal okay again i believe that such questions should be done online they should be done on a piece of paper so i will be actually collecting the assignments or else you can scan them and post them online but something like this a mechanism like this to draw a line you're gonna cry you're gonna swear you're gonna hate me which is not something i really want at this point so attack at c2 is preferred is preferred now this has to do with the with the different with the mechanism so if you were to look at the forms of parole okay you have a negative charge on both p2 and p3 okay p2 and p3 but the attack on p2 occurs a lot more readily a lot more freely than the attack on p3 okay now this is simply because when you add when you add the electrophile okay the two position has three resonance forms whereas the three attack has only two okay and remember the more resonance forms you have the more reactive something is okay the more resonance forms the more stable it will be therefore the more reactive it will be remember here i'm not contradicting myself okay it's not more stable therefore less reactive it's more stable therefore there is more room for attack okay and if the, if it can be attacked more because it exists more it will be more reactive overall so position number two will actually react a lot more okay even though the negative charge even though there is a possibility that you can react in two different places. Position number two is actually what's gonna be happening. Okay. So, pyrrole is the most reactive, then it's your and it's as I, but as I told you, they are all much more reactive than benzene. This is with the availability of the longer. So, pyrrole has a longer that can easily be shared in the ring. Then, if you run into it's about the electronegativity. So, look at if you run. If you run, you can have a mixture of, of reactants, whereas thiophene and, sorry, pyrrole have a mixture. Whereas thiophene and furan you don't. Okay? So there is a difference here. There is a difference in reactivity. Apart from the fact that the starting materials are also different. Okay? The starting materials here, this is a nitro as well acid. Okay? Highly reactive. Okay? Chlorine, again, highly reactive, and acid chloride, highly reactive. But the condition is relatively reflexive. If anything, here you are cooling down. Normally, to add something to benzene, you need to reflux. Okay? Plus, you it will not work if you try to add chlorine with acid. It will just not work. Whereas for furan, it will. If you were to try and add an acid chloride for benzene, it will not work. You need a catalyst. So here you have a system where the reactions, reactivity is much higher than that of benzene. Okay? And of course, you can use the same reactions, the same re re reagents as benzene, okay? So if you want to, uh, to add the nitro group, you can add 
they can load 3D and H2SO4 and low temperatures, so on and so forth. It's not going to change because the activities have changed. You can still use similar reagents. Basicity of parole. So basicity is how basic something is. And this is not that basic, okay? Mainly because the lone pair is in the ring. If anything, again, parole is slightly acidic. If anything, parole is slightly acidic, okay? Lone pair is tied up by resonance, protonation occurs on carbon. So do you remember that earlier on, we had mentioned that you have a negative charge here and here, or you can have a negative charge. Again, C2 attack is more possible from what we've seen in previous two slides. Therefore, it would be on this carbon where you do at the hydrogen. But look at the pKa, it's minus 4.4, okay? This is very, very weakly acidic, after it weakly basic. Recall amines, oh sorry, amides, you can have similar thing, okay? And again, amides, they are very, very weakly basic. And last week we see that in the Gabriel synthesis, we use a diamide which is slightly acidic. And you also have an enamine where it's also slightly acidic, okay? Or very, very weakly basic. In fact, pyrrole is quite acidic, okay? Now, when we say it's quite acidic, it's not an acid. Look at the pKa here, it's 16.5. <coughs> it's not acidic, but compared to normal benzene, which is around 30 to 2, I believe, or compared to alkanes, which is around pKa equals 40, this is highly acidic compared to them. Highly, highly acidic compared to them. Why? Because you can use the proton and the electrons will go in the ring. Okay? So the charge is then going to go to the ring. A is a cyclopentane, which is the analogous theory, an analogous compound, but non-aromatic analogous compound. You have a full change from pK equals 16.5 to pK equals 35. Remember this change here, it's not this is twice as bad. This this change is 10 to the power of 19 stronger acid. It's a huge, huge difference. And then we can look at the multiple rings. So similar to something like indole and naphthalene. Okay. So indole, you can have different resonance forms. And these resonance forms will actually give you rise to specific places where you're going to react. Now, we haven't done naphthalene. Naphthalene is in the last chapter for us. So we'll take a look at it then. We're going to, prepare, we're going to look at how to prepare naphthalene. So in, in Dole, we're actually going to see where the positions are going to be, reactions. Remember, you need to react in positions where it leaves aromaticity and where you have the most resonance forms. It has to be that you are going to check for both. Remember, it's not, this, it's not as simple as saying, oh, this reaction is going to happen here because I want it to happen here. The reaction happens wherever it happens because it's going to be more favorable. Okay, now C3 attack, you leave the aromatic ring. C2 attack, you don't. So this is not aromatic, whereas this is aromatic here. You still lose 
some aromaticity. So you don't have this small cyclopentane here, the aza cyclopentane aromatic, but at least you have some aromaticity. Whereas here, you don't. There's the localization, but it stops here, from here to here, okay? It's not an aromatic structure. Okay, now, pyridine, or also known as azobenzene, this can be viewed as a cyclic aromatic amine, okay? So, again, an amine is an N double bond C, and here you have that N double bond C. But of course, when we're speaking about Pyridine, you can't forget and you can't not realize that this is not going to be a non-amine. It's an aromatic. If it's aromatic, it means that reactivity is going to be different. Okay? It means they're highly reactive. Whereas, whereas the benzene is not. And can be viewed as a cyclic aromatic amine, with the nitrogen being sp2 hybridized and the lone pairs perpendicular to the system. There you can see the electron density, the difference between benzene and pyridine. The nitrogen has both of the electrons here. Why? Because it has the lone pair. Whereas in normal benzene, the electrons are spread around on the compound. Okay? The nitrogen does not donate electron density, rather it withdraws by induction. So the nitrogen actually pulls some electrons towards it. Okay? And here you can see the resonance forms. And you can see that nitrogen is 3,5 directly. Okay? It's a metal directing group. Can anyone tell me why it's a metal directing group to nitrogen? Because it reduces the negative charge at the ortho and para directions. So by default, the metal is more available. Exactly. Okay? So because you have a positive charge, okay, the electrophile will, will repel. So the negative charge or the electro density is reduced, okay? It's not the negative charge actually that is reduced in reality, it's the electro density, huh? I think it was John, right? That's what I meant to say. Okay, so it's the electro density that is reduced, but your answer would have been sufficient. And with this, and pyridine is also a weak base. Why is it a weak base? First and foremost, you have the electrons that are tied up to the ring. But secondly, you would have a positive charge next to it, okay? And there would be some repulsion for the proton to attack. But then, yes, you are having more electrons on the nitrogen, which makes it a little bit more nucleophilic than what we were doing with pyrrole. So pyrrole is very non-basic, whereas pyridine is a weak base. Okay, it can take some electrons. But again, it's not as basic as a normal amine. So the electron density here does, affect, does make a difference. So pyridine, is pretty much a special case of benzene. Therefore, you can do the same reactions. But of course, it's less reactive. Okay? So pyridine is a poorer benzene. Pyridine will not do the same reactions as benzene because some reactions will simply not happen. For example, a reaction that's for benzene, it's very easy is nitration. But look, you need sodium nitrite and fuming H2SO4, 300 degrees Celsius. Whereas for benzene, we say the temperature has to be lower than 60 degrees so that you can be in a position where the reaction does not continue. For the bromination, you, use, you need to use the acid, you need to use SO3, and you, use, you need to use HBR. 
<coughs> Again, much tougher conditions than the ones we normally use for benzene. Now, why is it so difficult for, for pyridine to be nitrate? Okay, so you can nitrate in two different positions. Sorry, in three. One, ortho, para, and meta. If you do it on the ortho, there will be a positive charge on the nitrogen, which is not going to be happy. And therefore, this, this whole row here, this whole resonance forms, are not going to be that meaningful. Secondly, if you do it on the para position, you end up with a similar resonance forms where, where you have a nitrogen positive, which is not going to be the best. Okay? Thirdly, you can have the meta position. What the meta position is deactivated. So if it's deactivated, it's not going to be go to choice, but it's the only one that's going to be available where it reacts. And therefore, unfortunately, that's the one that we will be using. But having said that, you, know, you are in a position where it can happen in small quantities, okay? So just because something is not readily available in case, it doesn't mean it won't work. But the yield is only around 5%. And for a 5% yield, it's not really worth it. You might want to find different alternative routes. So how can you activate to improve it? So you might want to add electron donating groups. An electron donating group, for example, is the methyl or the amino. Both these groups actually give electrons to the ring. And if you are having an electrophilic substitution, you want the higher the electron density on the ring, the more reactive your substitute is going to be. So if I added two electron donating groups, then the temperature will go down. It's not just that the temperature goes down, the yield goes up. Now, the situation is, can you remove those CH3s? It might not be easy, but CH3 is quite a, is quite a small group, okay? So there is a good, good chance that CH3 will not affect in any bioactivities. If it does, you might want to introduce other groups that are a bit easier to remove, okay? For example, amino pyridine, the amino group here, you can form the diazonium salt and remove it with relative ease. Okay? Now, why would you want to activate a substituent? It doesn't just improve the yield, because the yield, if you can recycle your starting material, it might not make a massive difference. But it reduces, it makes the conditions a little bit easier, it makes the conditions a lot more useful. So 100 degrees is a lot easier than 300 degrees. Okay, 100 degrees, in fact, is something that you can do with water. You can boil water and reach 100 degrees. Whereas 100 degrees, even if you were to heat oil, you might still end up reaching 180 to 100 degrees only. Pyridine undergoes relatively easy nucleophilic aromatic substitution. Okay? Now, we haven't discussed, and this is what we're going to be doing next lesson. Next lesson, we're going to be doing the nucleophilic aromatic substitutions for everything, including for pyridine. Okay? But if you have a good base, okay, you can easily kick out the chlorine. And this has everything to do with the resonance forms, okay? Look at the resonance form here. If I have, if I add a nucleophile, I end up having all my atoms having eight electrons. And eight electrons is the octet rule, and that would be highly stable. On the other hand, now look, at the difference between the ortho para and the meta. In the ortho and para, you have a negative charge on the nitrogen. 
a negative stress on the nitrogen means that the nitrogen is very happy. Okay, remember there is still the localization. Okay, and therefore you can actually end up with nucleophilic substitutions here. Okay, again, the fact that the ring is slightly positive, okay, makes a difference, plays a part. But these two positions here are especially good in the specialty stable, okay, which means that your product, which means that your reaction is actually going to be highly possible and this works in relatively good yields. Okay, now remember, relatively good yield is normally somewhere around the, uh, over 40. If you can have over 80, over 90, it is a highly, very, very impressive yield. Okay, and these reactions are normally not the easiest to do. So 75% here is a very, very, very good important yield. Okay, so I will stop recording the lesson.